Almost five years ago today, I moved into my own place by myself at the age of 21. I had a lot of ups, downs, and uncertain moments throughout that time. I made a lot of mistakes, but I also made a lot of really good decisions along the way. But I've never been the type that likes to be stagnant. I've got to keep things moving. So one thing led to another. Next thing I knew, I was on a plane moving across the country to a new state the state of Nevada, which means I would be moving into my own place again, only this time it wouldn't be from scratch. I'd be doing so with experience. That said, I wanna sit down and give you some solid moving out advice. I've learned so much, and this video is basically years of frustration, mistakes, and a little bit of anxiety compiled into one video that saves you from those frustrations. So you can move out the right way and start strong. The first thing I wanna say about moving out is this. It has to be for you. Don't be in a rush just because now you're of age. Age really has nothing to do with it. It's more about your mental maturity and how much you can actually handle that type of financial responsibility. Everybody seems to think it's butterflies and rainbows the moment they move out. Now I get some peace and quiet. No one's gonna tell me when it's time to go to bed or when to do the dishes or when my curfew is. That's right, now it's all up to you. And I was in a rush too until I realized how quickly I actually needed to wake up and get my life together once I finally got what I wanted. Now that we got that out of the way, I want you to make a plan to get to where you want. Not just a moving out plan, but a plan to support yourself beyond that. I don't want you moving out now just so you can move back in with your parents a few months later with them saying, I told you so. We're not going for all of that. Here's how you make that plan. By the way, you might want to take notes. I should charge you for this, but this time it's going to be free. That's right. I ain't going to charge you this time. The first step is learning the cost of living in your area, and it doesn't need to necessarily be exact. It just needs to be a general number. And from there, what you'll want to look at is the average rent in your area, average utilities, you know, water, electricity, stuff like that. From there, you can figure out how much you need to save up. And I recommend three months worth of rent plus however much you need to pay up front. From there, you need to make a very important decision. And this is life or death now. Do you want to have roommates or do you want to do this solo dolo? This is a matter of personal choice, but all I'm going to say is this. If you decide to live alone, you have to be financially prepared for it. I personally don't like people enough to have roommates, so I decided to live alone, but I double and triple checked to make sure I was financially ready for that before I did anything. A good rule of thumb is your living expenses shouldn't be more than 30% of your income after tax. And I just want to say this, if you're going to live alone, you don't need a ton of space. 700 square feet is more than enough. The ultimate goal with this is to keep your rent as low as possible while living in a high quality environment where you feel safe. Thanks to the internet, this part is actually pretty easy. Once you have all of this sorted out, I want you to keep in mind, you have to be a trustworthy tenant. So it's important to have a solid credit score to show a track record that you can actually make payments on time. They don't want to just let anybody in because it's going to mess with their business if you can't keep up with your rent. You get booted out for that. So if you plan on moving out but you don't have a credit card, please get one. I recommend starting off simple, you know, using it to fill up your car with gas using it to go out to eat or to go out to the movie theater. Nothing too big, nothing too crazy, and just make sure you pay it off before the end of every month and you're good to go. And from there, just build it up gradually. But whatever you do, don't get yourself into credit card debt to the point where you can't pay it off because that will not help you. One more thing before we move on to the best part. There's going to be a bunch of things that you don't expect, like application fees, security deposit, pet rent if you have pets, all kinds of things. So make sure you save up for that on top of the three months worth of rent that I was telling you about earlier. Also, there's insurance you'll need to make sure you have, and it's super cheap, but most places will not let you move in without it. It's called renter's insurance. Super cheap, like I said, but very important. Don't forget about that. So now it's time to make a list of items you're going to need. If you don't make a list, you're going to mess around and forget a bunch of stuff, and then you're going to be making several trips to and from the grocery store looking sick. I know because I made this mistake more than once. The best way to start off this list is by naming each room in the place that you're about to move into. So let's say you're moving into a single bedroom apartment. So you have a bedroom, kitchen, living room, bathroom, and laundry room. By the way, if you can, you'll definitely want to make sure your apartment comes with a washer and a dryer just so you don't have to scramble to wash your clothes. That's a pro tip. Anyway, when it comes to your bedroom, you'll want to get stuff like curtains, bed sheets, pillows, pillowcases. That's actually one of the most slept on things when it comes to a bedroom. No pun intended. I mean, do you know how many people move out for the first time with one pillow? That ain't gonna work. 
I remember when my sister first moved into her college dorm and we were all with her and she pulls out one pillow. My dad was like, one pillow? He, he kind of had a point. Those bad boys get flat. You need, a, you need another one. Get them fluffy. Got to support that skull. Anyway, if you don't have bedroom furniture, or if you do, but you just don't want to bring it with you from your parents' house or wherever you're moving from, make sure you have an air mattress or something until you're able to get the bedroom set that you want, or at least the bed that you want. And the rest is just a matter of personal preference. Like maybe you want to save up for a nightstand and a dresser, and maybe you want to get a mirror attached to the dresser. It's really up to you from there what you want to do with it. Oh, and before I forget, you're also going to need an iron and an ironing board so you don't walk around with wrinkled clothes on looking like a ruffle potato chip. We can't be having that. And speaking of potato chips, I know you like to eat in your room, and rightfully so. It's your room, you can do whatever you want. Get yourself a vacuum. That way you won't have guests coming in, walking through crunched up Lay's and Dorito chips, cookie crumbs, and pop tarts from when you stayed in all night watching Netflix and playing video games all night. I know how it is. For your bathroom, you're definitely gonna need a plunger. Look, I don't care what anybody says, we all stop up the toilet and don't sit here and act like you're an exception. I don't care how pristine you are. We Look, you better get yourself a plunger. Be proactive, not reactive. You'll need shower curtains, Clorox wipes, toothbrush, toothpaste. You'll probably want to get a toothbrush holder, soap, a soap dispenser, toilet paper, paper towels, flushable wipes. I mean, this stuff sounds obvious, but I'm telling you, people forget about this stuff. I hope you're catching on that I'm basically making your list for you, so write these down. You can thank me later. Matter of fact, you can thank me by liking this video and hitting the subscribe button if you haven't already. Also, follow me on Instagram. You'll need a toilet scrubber, toilet bowl cleaner, body wash, shampoo, a loofah, because that's how you get the most out of your body wash. Those types of things. Oh, and of course, lotion. So you don't walk around with crusty skin. We definitely can't be having that. Towels, washcloths. For the kitchen, you'll need stuff like dish soap, a dish rack, you know, one of these things. Just in case you didn't know what that was, I just wanted to show a picture for you real quick. They're actually really, really helpful. You'll need pots, pans, cups, glasses, mugs, oil. Again, this is some slept on advice. Everybody forgets the oil. How are you going to cook without oil? You'll definitely want to get salt, pepper, and whatever other seasonings you use normally. Clorox wipes. And by the way, I know I said that before, every room needs Clorox wipes. And I know I said dish soap, but you'll also need some dishwasher soap, you know what I'm saying? Have both of them on hand. And oven mitts for those of you who like to bake. Those are the basics. And this is something I just want to put out there. If you're anything like me, you probably won't be in a rush to buy a kitchen table, like at all. Like to this day, I still don't have a kitchen table. Especially if you're moving in alone, you really don't need one like that. It's not like you're going to be sitting down with a group of people every day, you know what I'm saying? You're most likely going to be by yourself or at most with another person just eating, so you don't need a whole table for that. But if you do want to have a kitchen table that is something you can go ahead and put on your list. Don't forget the chairs. For your living room, as far as stuff that you might have to buy that you don't already have, a couch is pretty much good enough. If you really wanna get fancy, you can bring a love seat in there. You can also put a coffee table in the middle just so you're not dealing with a bunch of empty space. I don't know about you, but I don't really like just to have a bunch of empty space. Never been a fan of it. For your laundry room, I'm going to keep this very basic. You just need a couple of laundry baskets, some detergent, and that's pretty much it. My bad, that's not all you need. I'm tripping. You're also going to need some dryer sheets. Now, I personally left a lot of those things out because I know you're going to be bringing your own stuff with you as well. It's basically the most stressful part of moving out. You will need boxes. So maybe you have some resourceful family members who just so happen to have a bunch of boxes. Cool. There you go. Or, you know, you might have to ride out and go get boxes, which you'll have to pay for, but it's really not that big of a deal. You could just add that cost into everything else and you'll be fine. But yeah, it's part of the process. And by the way, packing really sucks. Like I literally waited to the last moment I could to finish packing. That's how much I hate it. Anyway, you wanna make a list here too because you definitely don't wanna leave anything important behind, but you also don't need to bring every single personal possession of yours with you. Stuff like your TV, your clothes, the hangers your mom gave you, video games, shoes, your laptop. All that stuff is what I would recommend making a list for because some things are really important, but you're just not going to think about them in the moment. Chargers, SD cards, remotes, batteries, like those things are important, but you probably don't think about them in the moment of moving out. So I know throughout this video, I've been pretty much naming a bunch of things that sound obvious, right? 
Well, some things that are not so obvious that are also very, very important are things like your birth certificate. I left mine all the way back home in North Carolina when I moved out here to Nevada, and I had to wait to get it in the mail just so I could get my Nevada license. That's no fun. So think about any document that you want to take with you that you probably haven't thought about. It may be a degree. It may be a certificate. Maybe you have some artwork that you did a few years ago that you're really proud of that you want to hang up on the walls. I really want you to think about this in depth before you move out. That way you won't be having to make so many trips back and forth or having your parents or whoever mail stuff to you all the time. I mean, you'll still probably have to make trips back and forth, but with this advice I'm giving you, it'll be way less, way less. Now it's time to learn how to budget your money and keep your expenses as low as possible so you can get used to living on your own. I have a video on this that I made a while ago, but I think it's time I made a new video about this. So if that's what you want, comment down below and you can consider it done. Anyway, a budget is where you sort out your expenses like rent, utilities, your car note, phone bill, internet, restaurants, date night, etc. This will keep you in control of your finances from the very beginning. But I will say this though, don't expect to get it perfect the first time you ever do it. It took me like three months to get mine down and actually understand the pattern and the ins and outs of my bank account. Another thing is this, and this is actually really important when you're starting out your budget. This is the first step. And that's understanding that when you look at the amount of money you make per year, like on paper, you need to train yourself to look at it as if it's a big lie, because it kind of is. Let's say you make $50,000 per year. No, you don't. It's closer to like 37,500 or 39,000, like somewhere between that. But it's definitely not 50,000 that you absolutely take home. So if you want to live a comfortable lifestyle where you're not stressing out about money, I highly suggest that you base your budget off of your after-tax salary. See, what I did when I first moved out was I based my rent based off of my full salary, like without any taxes. And that's a big no-no because I based my rent and my entire budget off of a lie. Now, I made a decent amount of money then, so it wasn't like it was hurting my finances, but I could have gotten a much cheaper place and had way more money at my disposal. Lastly, I want you to watch the video I just made on the financial mistake that most young people make. That video will prepare you to avoid those mistakes and make more money while you're young so you can do what you've always wanted to do. Anyway, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.